Dynasty Waiver Wire Show. We're talking about that in today's video. As always, like and subscribe to the channel. We're talking about some deep Dynasty Waiver Wire ads that you should potentially make for your Dynasty teams. Not a lot of content out there for Waiver Wires for Dynasty shows. Obviously, there's a lot for Redraft, but all those guys, you know, Isaiah Likely and Jordan Mason, those guys are already on Dynasty teams. Doesn't really help us. So I'm providing some very, very deep, deep Dynasty waiver wire ads that maybe you'd like to make a lot of it based on injury. And a lot of these guys are going to be running backs, which is kind of how it should be in Dynasty. So starting off with the quarterback position, we have Sean Clifford. Sean Clifford, if you don't know, is a um, quarterback for the Green Bay Packers. He was the backup quarterback for Jordan Love last year. Um, and then they traded for Malik Willis this year. Um, and he got put, Sean Clifford, that is, on the practice squad. Um, I assume they're going to elevate him. I'm surprised he wasn't even elevated for um, that first game as the emergency guy. But I assume they're going to elevate him from the practice squad. Um, and that being said, I think he should be added in Superflex teams. Now, it doesn't seem like Jordan Love's injury is going to – it's going to be on the lower side of the injury mistime um range you know i've heard anywhere from just like a couple weeks to maybe three four weeks you know it could be as high as like six is what i originally heard seems like it's going to be the lower one they're not putting him on ir at least as of now um and uh you know they're gonna roll with malik willis seemingly and um packers are a team that wants to make the playoffs and they have super bowl aspirations and i think they can make the playoffs and make a run in the playoffs that being said, if they're going to, they can't afford to lose games. They're already 0 and 1. They're going up against the Colts and Titans the next two weeks. Um, those are not, you know, those are not, oh, we're going to lose games, but they're not easy wins either. Both those teams, I think, are pretty good. And um, if the Packers start off 0 and 2 or 0 and 3, they're going to be in a major, major hole. So if Malik Willis, who the Packers traded for him and they seem to like him, that being said, we've seen him play. He's, he could have improved, of course. we got to give him the benefit of the doubt. But we've seen him play. If he looks like what he's looked like in the past, they're going to make a move to Sean Clifford. And I think Sean Clifford can, um, you know, whether you trade him and get a fourth-round pick for him to the Jordan Love manager or, you know, you use him as a QB three or four on your team while he's a starter, I think he could put up decent numbers with all these weapons and in the LaFleur system. So Sean Clifford is someone I think should be added considering he is now the backup quarterback for the Green Bay Packers. Daenerys Prince, the, the darling of July, uh, June and July, even I was kind of in on him. You know, he's seemingly going to win the backup job for the Chiefs, or at least the RB3. Uh, and then Carson Steele came out of nowhere and took that job from him, and he didn't even make the team. If you don't know, Daenerys Prince is on the Dolphins. He's on the Dolphins practice squad. Now, the reason I'm saying to add him is because both Mostert and HN have injuries. Uh, Mostert has a chest, HN has an ankle. Um, that's a little bit concerning. They play on Thursday, so there's a good chance both those guys miss. Um, you're not starting generic prints this week, but um, my, my point being is I want any active running back that's on the Dolphins. There's a couple teams there where I don't care if they're the RB3 or 4. I want them on my active roster. So if Jeff Wilson's out there, you need to add him to your team. Daenerys Prince, if he gets elevated, you need to add him to your team. The Dolphins running back room is way too valuable. Two guys are most likely going to be valuable almost every single game. And um, so if those guys are dealing with injuries, who, by the way, Mostert, 32 years old, could never stay healthy up until last year. HN, the biggest knock on him is injuries. Those guys could be dealing with a lot of injuries this year. Daenerys Prince, I think you should be adding. Hassan Haskins. Um, if you didn't realize, Hassan Haskins, Haskins is on the Chargers. Um, Chargers are another one of those teams. <coughs> excuse me, another one of those teams where I think I want to roster all the running backs on that on that team because they're going to run the ball a lot. Um, <clears throat> they did it last week. They had um, was it ten carries for uh, for Gus Edwards or sorry for Dobbins, eleven for for Gus Edwards. Didn't run a whole lot of plays in general, but. Um, <clears throat> You know, right now, Hassan Haskins, who, by the way, played um, with Harbaugh at Michigan, um, he's on their team, and he's considered the RB3 ahead of Kamani Vidal. Now, if something were to happen to both Edwards and Dobbins, I think they obviously use multiple guys, but that means Haskins is going to get 
a little bit of run. If something happens to a 29-year-old Gus Edwards and a J.K. Dobbins who's come off back-to-back in major injuries and, and can't seemingly stay healthy in his career. So I want to have the RB3 and the, and the RB4 for the Chargers, just like the Dolphins. Kenny McIntosh or McIntosh, not sure how to say it. Um, he is a it was a rookie last year. Uh, he's on the Seattle Seahawks, in case you didn't know. Uh, Kenneth, well, this is more about Kenneth Walker dealing with that um, abdomen issue. I think he's going to be fine. I think he's going to play through it. That being said, he's considered the RB3 right now. Um, generally, you want to be rostering most running backs that are on, on active rosters, especially when there's an injury to the first guy or a potential injury. Um, we see running backs, RB3, RB3s come out of nowhere, and they give you good two- to three-week stretches. Uh, Kenny McIntosh, um, you saw what Kenneth Walker did in that load. Obviously, that's going to go to Charbonnet, but if something were to happen to Charbonnet or Walker is more seriously injured, then Kenny McIntosh should be uh, rostered for sure. Patrick Taylor on the 49ers. Um, this... Christian McCaffrey injury is concerning. It's a, what was the latest update? An Achilles strain. See, he seems like he's not going to play week two. Every game the 49ers win buys them another week to not play McCaffrey. Obviously, they want McCaffrey out there to see their offense and stuff, but they're not going to rush him back. Too important to the team. And this team can win without him as we saw them win in kind of dominating fashion against the Jets last night. That being said, McCaffrey, it's an Achilles strain calf injury, and there's people out there saying this stuff can linger for weeks or even months. I want all the running backs on uh, the 49ers. It's going to be Jordan Mason's job. What if something happens to Jordan Mason? Who is next? Well, you have Isaac Garendo, and then you have Patrick Taylor. So this is another team where because of the uncertainty of the injury to McCaffrey, I want him on – I want him on my team. I see the path to him being fantasy relevant if something were to happen to Jordan Mason. And that's injuries to a starting running back can happen at any time. Sione Vaki, um, I think I'm saying his first name right. Sione Vaki is of the Detroit Lions. I've been talking about him for a couple months now. He was a hybrid safety running back. They're playing him at running back. He's He's on the Lions, by the way, as you can see by the helmet. Uh, he's the RB4 for the Lions behind Craig Reynolds, who, by the way, I think Craig Reynolds should be rostered. The Lions are another one of these teams. Dolphins, Chargers, Lions. Those three teams, right now the 49ers as well. Those four teams, I want all the running backs on their active rosters because Dolphins, or sorry, Lions are very similar to the Dolphins in the sense that all it takes for the RB3 to be relevant is one injury. All it takes is one injury. If Gibbs or Montgomery get hurt, Craig Reynolds is going to get playing time. It's not a situation where it's just all going to go to Montgomery or all to go to, going to go to Gibbs. I don't think so. So you're kind of one injury away. You're the RB4, you're two injuries away, right? Gibbs, we've already seen kind of beat up to head into the season. He's seemingly healthy. Now that could change in, on a dime, right? That could change on a dime. Sione Vaki, he's a rookie. He's intriguing, um, has some intriguing skill sets. Um, I want him on my roster. And then Chris Collier is um, the last one here. He's on the Baltimore Ravens. He's actually on their practice squad. If you go look at the Ravens' depth chart, they have two running backs. They have two running backs on their depth chart. Is Derrick Henry and is Justice Hill. Um, Keaton Mitchell is considered out. Um, I guess he's not on the IR. I thought he was on the IR or the PUP. Um, isn't he on the PUP? Yeah, he is on the PUP, so he's going to miss some time still. Rasheen Ali is on the IR. Both those guys are going to miss time. They're going to miss at least, what, three more weeks for both those guys? So basically, they have two guys on their roster. It's Derrick Henry and Justice Hill. Now, they have two running backs. Um, they have two running backs on their practice squad. Um, by the way, Owen Wright is another running back for the Ravens who's on IR. Um, but anyways, the Ravens have two running backs on uh, their practice squad. I'm just double-checking the other name here. Uh, they have Chris Collier, who's a rookie. And then they have John Kelly, who's a, a second-year guy out of Tennessee. I don't know who, if something were to happen to Henry or Justice Hill, who would be elevated. Maybe they sign someone as well. It's not even a guarantee they use one of these guys. That being said, it's very interesting to me that the Ravens, a team that wants to run the ball, 
Um, they have only two running backs on their team, and one of them is a 30, what, 30, 31 year old running back. Just something to think about there. Something to think about. On to the wide receivers. I have three wide receivers here for you. Devon Vele, he's probably the one that's like the most rostered out of all, this whole list. He's kind of making a name for himself heading into the season. Um, he came out and, uh, you know, RIP to, to uh, Marvin Mims and and um, and Troy Franklin as of right now because you have a seventh-round rookie who's starting over those guys. Devon Vele came out. Uh, he went to college at Utah. He has good size at 6'4", 200. Sean Payton loves his late-round undrafted players. He loves finding those guys and saying, look how smart I am. I find these guys and I can put them in. And they produce at times. He had eight targets and eight catches. Now, he only had 40 yards, which is kind of the product of the Bo Nix offense. But eight, eight for 40 is like flex-worthy in a lot of deeper leagues. And a lot of you play in deeper leagues in – um, in dynasty. So Devon, Devon Vele is a guy that you should be picking up if he's not already rostered. Mac Hollins is another one here. Mac Hollins is going to play a lot more snaps than we all maybe expected. I kind of alluded to this when, when we went over the, the bills and talked about, you know, who do we take Curtis Samuel, Keon Coleman, uh, Cleo Shakir, and then kind of saying, there's two other guys on that team that could complicate everything, Matt Collins and Mar uh, MVS, right? So just double-checking right now you what you have, the situation you have here. I think Matt Collins played the most snaps um, for the Bills at the receiver position. For whatever reason, I cannot find – found it. Um, you know when you're looking at things and you just like can't see it, it should be obvious. Um, so we looks like we have, I'm just double checking the wide receiver with the most snaps was actually Keon Coleman. And then it was Mac Hollins. Mac Hollins scored a touchdown. He can do things that those other guys can. He's a big receiver that can stretch the field that can block in the run game and teams value that he can play the X position. I don't think Keon Coleman should be playing the X position. Curtis Samuel can't. Cleo Shakir shouldn't be. Um, it might be MVS slash Mac Collins, and it might be a mix of those guys. Mac Collins can do things that Keon Coleman cannot. Just saying, it wouldn't surprise me, especially if there's an injury there to either Kincaid to um, uh, to Keon Coleman to Cleo Shakir. If there's an injury to those guys, um, I wouldn't be surprised if like Matt Collins becomes like. Oh my God, you can start him for four weeks, right? Like a Demarcus Robinson with the Rams last year. That dude was putting up points. Matt Collins can do that for a three, four week stretch, as gross as it sounds. Jalen Naylor. Um, Jordan Addison has another ankle sprain. I think it's a, uh, the opposite foot of what he's already had. He's probably going to miss some time. Jalen Naylor is their wide receiver three. Now he's going to be their wide receiver two without TJ Hawkinson, without Jordan Addison. Uh, he caught a 21-yard touchdown in, in the game uh, last week in week one. You could see a little bit more volume for Naylor. The team seems to like him. So if Jalen Naylor is not um, rostered, I would think about throwing him on there on my team. Again, this is for deeper, deeper leagues. But uh, anyone beyond that, it's like Brandon Powell, and uh, Brandon Powell is another guy that potentially could get some run here. But I think Naylor's going to take over kind of the Addison role. And then I have two tight ends from the same team here. I have Luke Schoonmaker, who I assume is on most people's teams. Um, that would be my guess, that he's on most people's teams. Maybe not. Maybe he isn't. Um, and if he's not, I would be adding him because Ferguson's going to miss some time. And honestly, Schoonmaker can come in and he could do what um, – an old Jason Witten did with Dak Prescott, what Dalton Schultz did with Dak Prescott, what Luke Ferguson did with Jack, Dak Prescott, what Luke Schoonmaker is probably going to do with Dak Prescott. Do you see a theme here? It's not like we're talking about these super uber talented athletic guys. We're talking about just solid, solid players that is going to be in an offense that targets their tight ends. So uh, Brevin Span Ford is the other backup tight end for the Cowboys. Um, so he's now going to move from tight end three to tight end two while Ferguson's out. If Ferguson is out, I would assume. And, um, the only reason I'm bringing him up is because, uh, Scootmaker is probably rostered. 
So um, if you're looking for the Dallas tight end, maybe to roster that's out there on waivers, wa- uh, waiver wire, it's maybe Brevin Spanford. He's an undrafted rookie. Don't expect much from him, but he's a beast of a man. He's six foot seven, 270. Could he go and catch some touchdowns? Absolutely. Absolutely. So there you have it, guys. My deep dynasty waiver wire show. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Appreciate you all um, very, very much for watching. Um, hopefully you enjoyed this. Hopefully it helped you. And uh, I'll be back next week with some more deep dynasty waiver wire ads. As always, like and subscribe. Catch you guys in the next video.